view. Weekdays only on ABC. Ms. Bernie, we seem destined to be adversaries. Sit down, Mr. Ryan, please. Thank you. I must say, I was surprised to learn you'll be representing your sister in her marital difficulties. Why? I offer a 10% discount to all family and friends. I drum up a lot of business that way. I see. Well, why don't you tell me what it is you want? First of all, I don't want you to think that I'm making light of the situation. Believe me, I'm, I'm sad that it's gone this far. Jack serving Mary with a formal complaint is a, is a sad business for both of them. I, I yes, know. I understand she refused the papers. It means a process server, of course. I know, but Mary's intention is to make it as rough as possible for Jack. She does not want this divorce. So I gathered. Now, I realize that whatever Jack has told you about their marriage is a privileged communication. But I would like you to understand Mary's point of view. She's entirely committed to Jack, to the marriage, and to the baby they're having. His leaving has made her miserable, and she thinks his grounds for a church annulment are entirely trumped up. She's determined to do everything possible to preserve their marriage. Then I'm rather afraid there will be a fight. Yeah, it looks that way. Because both you and me know, Miss Bernie, it's not going to be easy for Jack to get a divorce without Mary's consent. And it's not going to be easy for you to prove cruel and inhuman treatment. Mary has always done everything possible to offer Jack her complete support. Would that include getting pregnant with a child he doesn't want? Well, you couldn't prove that in a court of law, and she didn't. My client thinks differently. He knows better. Mr. Ryan, there is another possibility. There is the possibility that in time, your sister may change her mind. If that's your strategy, you're mistaken. You have not seen Stubborn until you've seen Mary Ryan Finelli. Nevertheless, I have to act in accordance, in, in accordance with my client's wishes. Miss Bernie, let me tell you something, just between you and me. Jack doesn't want this divorce either. Oh? May I ask why? He's deeply in love with my sister, and that hasn't changed. Now, they have troubles, but their marriage was a good one before the accident. It's not proper for me to go into details. But let's just say that Jack is in a lot of psychological trouble now, and this is how it's getting played out. Mr. Finelli has asked me to handle his divorce. It's hardly up to me to try to talk him out of it. Ah, uh -huh, but as his attorney, you obviously have his best interest at heart. Obviously. What are you suggesting, Mr. Ryan? I know this is unorthodox. But I'm asking your permission to speak with Jack, as his brother-in-law and as someone who cares. It is unorthodox, no doubt about that. All right, Mr. Ryan, if you want to speak to my client, I have no objections. I'll do it right away. And thank you, Ms. Bernie. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. family learns the truth. This man is not our father. He's our father's twin brother. Now, the real Todd Manning... I lost eight years with my kids because of him! ...wants justice. I'm gonna kill him. Watch One Life to Live, weekdays on ABC, and weeknights at 9 on SoapNet. <laughs> Join us for The Chew, a new talk show that's made fresh every day. Wait till you try this. With expert advice. My favorite prosciutto comes from Iowa, but fortunately, they deliver. Dish towels that make the perfect napkins for messy backyard barbecues. The hottest trends. Pulled chicken tacos from the Korean barbecue truck. Delicious. And useful tips. Small shrimp are less expensive and just as tasty in my yummy gumbo. Join the chew for a bite. Weekdays, coming Monday, September 26th, only on ABC. On today's show, keep your photos right at your fingertips. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Okay, can you zoom in on this? Oh. <laughs> Okay, this is my boyfriend. This is my mom and dad. Robin, you okay? What you doing? Oh, dealing with a slight underwear malfunction. Oh, you need Hanes panties. They don't ride up. Yes, please. Hey, wardrobe. And now a word from Hanes. 
Hanes panties. So cute and they don't ride up. I've been waiting for a snack like you to come into my life. Lean Cuisine has snacks. Like creamy, cheesy spinach artichoke dip with warm pita. New from Lean Cuisine. Everybody loves that cushiony feeling. Uh-oh, I gotta go. And with Charmin Ultra Soft, you can get that same cushiony feeling while still using less. Its design is soft and more absorbent, so you can use four times less versus the leading value brand. Ah. Charmin Ultra Soft. As I get older, I'm making changes to support my metabolism. I'm more active, I eat right, and I switch to one-a-day women's active metabolism. A complete women's multivitamin plus more for metabolism support. And that's a change I feel good about. From one-a-day. Special K Protein Shakes. A truly great tasting breakfast shake. With 10 grams of protein and 5 grams of fiber, it's the creamy, delicious way to satisfy your hunger to help you lose weight. So you can kick the tin can habit. Try Special K Protein Shakes today. Meet Superstay 24-Hour Lip Color from Maybelline New York. With Microflex technology, our two-step stretches the limits of longwear through sticky, stressful, even steamy situations. No other longwear lasts longer, period. Superstay 24-Hour, only from Maybelline. Are you tired? Maybe uh, having visitors is not a good idea. No, no, no. I really, really enjoy the company. Julian, I'm worried about you. Faith indicated that something might be wrong. She said that to you? No, no, not straight out. It's just something I picked up on. Well, Roger, I'm sure you'll find out sooner or later. I was hoping you'd tell me because you needed to. We are a family, you know. Yeah, I guess we try. All right. All right, here it goes. Do you remember that there was a time last summer when I... I thought that I'd lost Frank for good? Mm -hmm. Well, that was probably the loneliest time of my life. When Frank went back to Delia. That's right. At the same time, Seneca was released from prison and he found out that his medical license had been revoked. So I offered him a couple of days at the beach house to regain his composure, think things through. It was also a diversion for me. Mm -hmm. Sure. It was a, a sad time. And yet it was peaceful. We enjoyed each other's company. We were both hurting a lot. He'd lost Nell, I'd lost Frank. Misery loves company. Yeah, I suppose something like that. Anyway, maybe you can figure the rest out for yourself. We made love. But more out of a need to comfort each other than anything else. And it only lasted those few days in August. And then when I came back, I found out that Frank had left Delia and everything had changed and everything was possible again. August? Uh, Jill, how far along are you now? Roger, you don't have to try and calculate. This is Seneca's baby. That's incredible. No, not really. Casual affairs and unwanted pregnancies happen all the time. But the thing that's so difficult for me to understand is my own behavior. Because when Frank came back to me, I didn't tell him what happened. Well, I can certainly see why you didn't. Yeah, I'm sure you can. But the fact is that that one lie, that one omission of the truth has undermined our entire relationship. And I think it's probably destroyed it. Frank doesn't understand that you were trying to keep from hurting him? I didn't want to hurt myself, damn it! I wanted to protect this perfect image that I had with Frank. So I didn't give him a chance to understand. And then when I found out that... that this was Seneca's baby, I... I compounded the lie. I let Frank believe that it was his child. I tried to tell him the truth, but... a whole series of circumstances prevented that. Or so I thought. But I think maybe I was just a coward. Julian, you have never been a coward, and you're not going to start now. Look, I, I think you're being too hard on yourself. Roger, when I thought I was going to lose this baby, I thought I'd never have to tell Frank. But it would have been foolish then. 
Jill, for what it's worth, I do understand. Thanks, Roger. Is it... Is it over for good? Well, he can't see himself raising Seneca's baby. Basically, he can't forgive the lying. Life is so cruel sometimes. You know, lately, I've been making a real effort toward a new start, but I've been blocked every way. Wait a minute. Maybe some good can come out of this. I mean, if Seneca's going to be part of the family... Seneca is no such thing, Roger. But he will, inevitably. Look, you'll be close to him. He's the father of your child, of my niece or nephew. Roger, what are you getting at? I asked Seneca to reinstate me at Riverside, and he refused. But if you put in a good word for me, Jill, would you do that? <laughs> the new reformed Roger Coleridge. You want to know something? I would like to ask Seneca, just to see the expression on his face. But it would be a waste of time. Yeah, we both know he's stubborn. Stubborn and controlling and determined. You want to know something? He would have this baby for me if he could. But on the other hand, maybe it's best that he cares too much. It's better than being alone and abandoned. That does happen to people, you know. Well, I would like to think that I have some al alternative other than being under Seneca's thumb. What I really would like is... You know, why am I kidding myself? What I want is Frank, and I know I can't have him. And I have to get used to that idea. But, Roger, faith has Pat. And we have to be grateful for happiness. Did you tell me what's going on? What do you mean? Well, I tell you. I was just down in pediatrics where I found Faith laughing, singing to the children, and doing just about everything but standing on her head. She was so happy. But you haven't told her, have you? I haven't told Faith because I'm not sure what's going on myself. You don't know what's going on? Delia is pregnant and you're responsible. Now, I can't believe you. How could you let go Faith go on thinking that everything's all right? Buck, Delia's disappeared. Oh, no, what? Come on. I mean, it's another trick, that's all. I mean, did she leave a trail of breadcrumbs for you to follow? It's not a joke. She left the house early this morning and there's a strong possibility that she's trying to get an abortion. An abortion? Delia, I mean, that doesn't make any sense. If she planned all this as a trap. It does make sense. She knows I'm not going to marry her. You told her that? Oh, man, that'd have solved everything, wouldn't it? I mean, even Faith wouldn't have to know. Yeah, I think an abortion is the answer. Some answer. No, oh, wait a second. I mean, <laughs> even if Delia does get an abortion, I can't believe she wouldn't tell somebody. She'd have to mention it to somebody. I still had a blow over. I mean, Faith would be hurt, but she'd forgive you. She'd probably even understand. Because she loves you. Mad woman that she is. Yeah, I think an abortion's the only way out. I don't want to hurt Faith, or ruin our plans, or let my family find out about my less than noble behavior in Boston. And I don't want Delia for life. So yeah, it's an answer. Only it's tampering with a human life. We're doctors, Bucky. We're supposed to save lives. Okay, abortion's rough. But if there was ever an unwanted child, I mean, this is it. I mean, do you think Dee wants this baby? It is nothing but a means to an end to her. The court's already taken away one baby from me. You think she'd be any better mother to this one? Okay, you just... No, no, look, you wait a minute. If you want to worry about somebody's life, why don't you worry about face? That's the one you're messing up on. You have any idea how much she's been through in the past year? What are you going to do? Abandon her again? Faith is the most important thing to me. It's completely different now. I, I love her more than I thought it would be possible, and I want to share my life with her. If I didn't feel that way, you'd think I'd be in such a mess. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I was just thinking about you and Faith. Well, there's other people involved besides me and Faith. 
I don't know how you feel about Delia, but she's going through some pretty miserable stuff right now. As for my family, abortion is against everything they believe in. If my mother were to find out about this, I don't think she'd ever get over it. New relationships can be amazing. This is where I belong. But this week... That was freaking unbelievable. They're downright jaw-dropping. How would you like to take on a partner? I'm in. The twists keep coming. You don't know the whole story. Watch All My Children, weekdays on ABC, and weeknights at 8 on Soapnet. Pack it! Would you like to be my friend? I can run just like the wind. Only Kleenex brand has Sneeze Shield in all its tissues to help catch sneezes in their tracks. Sneeze Shield your kids wherever they go. Now in new convenient on-the-go packs. I wanted to look great. Xenadrin helped me lose 50 pounds. I lost 31 pounds. I lost 40 pounds. And I lost an incredible 37 pounds. Lose weight and look great with Xenadrin. When you come to eHarmony, I can promise you, we sincerely care about you. Experience the difference of a site that really cares about helping you find a wonderful relationship. Visit eHarmony today and review your compatible matches free. Have I got a surprise for you? <laughs> yeah, it's new Benefo Healthy Fiesta. Gotta love the protein for muscles and omega-rich nutrition for that shiny coat. Ever think healthy could taste so good? New Benefil Healthy Fiesta. Jason, look out! Happening now on General Hospital. I think I know what's causing Jason's seizures. Do you remember Jason's original accident? Why are you? The first accident made him a ruthless killer. Jason! No one knows what will happen this time. Wait, you think wake up a different person? Who will Jason be? Say something. General Hospital, weekdays on ABC, weeknights on Soapnet. Oh, for crying out loud. Do it. Come on in. Hi, Jack. Oh, terrific. Just what the doctor ordered. Back to work, huh? Gotta pay the rent. Look, uh, this is a social call. I'm, uh, I'm busy. Oh, not on your life. I'm Mary's lawyer, and I'm here in a professional capacity. Yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, I got a lawyer of my own. You're supposed to see her. I have Ann Bernie's permission, and I'd hoped that we could talk in a civilized manner. So come on, this being uh, surly is a waste of time for both of us, huh? Spoken like a true Ryan. Well, now that you rendered your judgment and my personality, why don't you just uh, go ahead and say what you gotta say, huh? May I sit down? Be my guest. Thank you. Jack, I was happy when Mary married you. Yeah, about as happy as your good old da was. Not so. Maybe you wouldn't have been my choice. Obviously, there's nobody in the world good enough for my sister. But I was glad because you were the man she wanted. She loved you with all her heart. I also know, if you'll excuse me, that you were the first and only man she had ever slept with. And I knew what that commitment meant to her, even before marriage was ever discussed. You, uh, you Ryans really tell everything to each other, don't you? We share a lot. And we try to be pretty honest with each other. Very laudable. My sister's an extraordinary person. You know that. She has been from the day she was born. She's vital, intelligent, positive. Hey, you, uh... You her lawyer or her publicity agent? She's loving, loyal, and very, very stubborn. She's not about to give up on your marriage or on you. Okay, Frank. I know you're sincere. I know that you mean well. But it isn't gonna help. I know what I'm doing, and I know why. Now, if Mary wants to make it tougher, there isn't much I can do about it. But I was hoping that she'd uh, just let it go through as quickly and as painlessly as possible by both of us. Huh? Painless? Not a chance. Mary's committed in the eyes of God to being your wife and the mother of your child. And she'll do anything, go through any kind of pain to keep that commitment. She's also had the kind of upbringing that makes loving 
and sharing second nature to her. Well, I haven't. And there's nothing in my makeup or my upbringing to make me fit to be her husband or anybody's father. Well, this is one hell of a time you've got to admit to start deciding that, Yeah, Jack. well, Mary knew it all the time. She knew it. Just so sure that she could change me, make me a family man. Well, it didn't work. So we gotta stop before it's too late. Frank, I don't wanna hurt Mary anymore. I believe that. But I suspect that you're you're letting superficial problems cloud over the basic issues at stake Why here. Why don't you save that devil talk for the city council? Hmm? All right, I'll be straight. You promised to have a bypass operation before even considering an annulment. I'm asking you to keep that promise. And I'm telling you, lawyer, councilman, brother-in-law, or whatever the hell you are, that I'm sick and tired of having Ryans tell me what to do and when to do it. Okay. I can see I'm not getting any place. But I would like you to understand this much. Mary doesn't want the annulment. She's going to fight it. And she's going to have a whole army of people from your favorite family supporting her every step of the way. Have a good day, Jack. Next, take a trip to the Upper West Side on Ryan's Hope. Later, spend some time in Genoa City with the Young and the Restless, only on SoapNet. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. At the table. Get ready for the chew. <laughs> a new talk show where everyone brings something to the table. To make a creamy soup without the cream, use tofu. For fresh ingredients, nothing beats local. This local enough for you? <laughs> Treat yourself to something delicious. If you love beef, try pastrami instead of bacon on your burger. Make every recipe your very own. Join the chew. Weekdays, coming Monday, September 26th, only on ABC. Ease of cooking is very important to me. Purdue Perfect Portions is great on busy nights. Five chicken breasts, individually wrapped, so you can use what you want and put the rest in the refrigerator. And the best part is it only takes 10 minutes. It's my go-to meal. Hey. hey, Mom. What is this? It's a special paste I invented to replace socks. Why? Because we can't find socks that shape to our feet. We're sick of it. Try Hanes socks with the smooth comfort toe seam. A better fit your whole family will love. Bacon? Ooh la la. I say, is that bacon? Oh, look at bacon! 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 bacon. <laughs> Who wants a bacon strip? Me! I get it myself, but I don't have sums! Um, yum, 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 yum! It's bacon! Mm, I love you. I love bacon, I love you. I love bacon, I love you. Bacon strips. Bacon, There's no bacon. time like bacon time. And introducing bacon thick cut. I'm gonna need a bigger mouth! Want more of your favorite soaps? That's great. Log on to abc.com slash daytime. Watch current full episodes of All My Children, General Hospital, and One Life to Live. Online critics love it. Plus, get exclusive sneak peeks of what's coming up next. Sounds like a thumbs up to me. Connect with other fans to discuss what's on your mind. I always want to hear what you have to say. And check out the 101 Galleries to get an intimate look at the history of your favorite characters. That's the best news I've heard all day. Find it all now at abc.com slash daytime. <laughs> Rubble still skin. I know why you're here. Has created a powerful curse. Time will stop and we will be trapped. Everything we love will be ripped from us for all eternity. No more happy endings. What can we do? The infant growing inside you. On her 28th birthday, the child will return. This is our only hope. I'd like a room. Welcome to Storybrooke. It has begun. Once Upon a Time, Sundays this fall on ABC. Seneca, 
Hi. Oh, do come in. Jill, I just had a long meeting with Bill Wolf. And we came out of that with a wonderful idea. Let me guess. He has decided to let you carry the baby the rest of the way. Oh, come on, be serious, will you? Now, this is something we have to consider. Uh, we? Yeah, we, we. This involves both of us. Okay. What is it? Okay. Now, Bill has a research grant. He's been doing some deliveries using the Le Boyer techniques. Have you heard anything about him? Le Boyer. Natural childbirth. No, 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 no. That's Lamaze. Huh? Matter of fact, they usually use one in conjunction with the other. Now, natural childbirth is aimed at reducing the, the suffering and the pain of the mother. You know, come to think of it, you really should start those classes right oh, away. Oh, Seneca. Le Boyer is a French obstetrician, and he figured out that reducing the, the trauma for the mother was only half the battle. And the baby finds being born a terrifying experience. So, he set about developing ways of reducing the suffering for the baby. How? In what way? Yeah, well, first, the baby is delivered in a quiet, darkened room. And instead of being held up and spanked, it's placed very carefully on the mother's abdomen. Yeah, where well, the body warmth is, is familiar and reassuring. And then, <laughs> the mother and the father gently massage the baby for four or five minutes. So right away, there's an atmosphere of love and being cared for. Well, it sounds wonderful. But wait a minute. How does the baby wake up? It is so simple and lovely. Bill showed me some actual tapes of some deliveries. Yeah, absolutely knock you out. <laughs> After the baby becomes more or less familiar with the outside world, the father picks him up and places him in a warm bath. I see, I saw it three times. <laughs> now, every time, the babies went into that bath with a, a vague look of apprehension on their face. There's a moment, and all of a sudden, you can just see the relief come over those little faces. <laughs> it's like they're saying, hey, I know about this. <laughs> and then they, they smile and open their eyes, and they look around. Jill, they are alert. Well, it sounds wonderful for the baby. Oh, for the parents, too. The mother and the father share in the, in the birthing. It's a bonding experience. Oh, I see. Look, Jill, I, I know that you would rather it were Frank's baby and that you were going through this with him, but it's my baby, and I want this way of bringing our baby into the world as a beginning. We're not a family, Seneca. No, no, we are not a family, but we are a father and a mother to that child. You're using this. Look, leaving us out of it, there are a lot of other good ways of delivering babies. But in my opinion, this is the way our baby should be born. Well, I hope at least you'll consider it. <laughs> it sounds too good and too interesting to not consider. Oh, terrific, <laughs> terrific. Listen, I've arranged it so you can see the tapes anytime you want. You have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All you have to do is call Bill and he'll set it up. I told him you'd probably want to take a look this afternoon. So this has all been decided already. I mean, you have obviously made up my mind for me. You know, Seneca, just suppose I had something else planned for this afternoon. Well, I can't think of anything you couldn't cancel. Oh, you are absolutely impossible, and I don't want to talk to you for another minute. Okay. All right, all right, listen. I apologize if, if I've been high-handed again, but... Jill, I, I, I was thinking about our child. I want this for him. Or her. I think you will, too, after you see the tapes. All right. I'll talk to my sister, and if she approves, I'll take a look at the tapes. She'll approve. You know, I, I know you think I'm a little bit pushy sometimes, but I'm right about this. Well, it sounds good for the baby. And that's what interests me. In Port Charles, revenge is a priority, relationships are disposable, and good medical care is a necessity. Keep up with this fast-paced city with an all-new episode of General Hospital, weeknights at 10 on SoapNet.